This is my 91 Honda CRX HF that I built from the ground up. This is the story behind the build. Back around 2006 or so, um, being inspired by a few buddies and their builds, I decided I finally wanted to take on my own ground up build. I knew I wanted something that was an older Honda, more of a classic Honda. I knew I wanted a hatchback. I knew I wanted a two door. The two options I considered were an 88 to 91 Honda CRX second gen or a DA Integra, 90 to 93 Acura Integra. So the search started for the right car you know, a good buddy of mine in high school had a CRX. I never liked these cars uh, until I test drove one for him. I was like, well, it's ugly, but these are kind of cool little cars. I wanted this car to be the perfect balance between function and form. I wanted it nicer than factory with a lot of JDM cues, and I didn't want it to be a show car, but I wanted it to be nice. A nice mixture between kind of race car, track JDM style, and a street car. I wanted to go an old school B-series engine, after some time searching, uh, back in the day, uh, Facebook Marketplace didn't exist. We spent a lot of time on internet forums, and KCSR, Kansas City Street Racing, is ultimately where I found this car. I had an EG Coupe that I was trying to trade for it. The car was pretty rough. Um, the entire thing was rattle canned. Um, it was missing the entire front core support, the T-bar. Someone did a horrible job of putting hood pins in through the hood. The hood was messed up, the fenders were trashed. When they rattle canned the car, they painted over half of the moldings. The car had very little interior. As rough as the car was, it did have a JDM B16 swap. The car was originally a California car. When I found the car, the guy was in the military stationed in Kansas. We worked out a trade. I got on the road. I drove all six hours to him. I was told the car had a full interior when I got there. It had a bunch of interior laying in the hatch. The car had no center console, had no radio, had no heat controls. And then on top of that, when I get there, the guy says he has to keep his SI wheels. The car was really rough. I was hesitant, but I'd already driven six hours um, and the swap seemed pretty solid. So we did the deal and I started back home in the middle of the night, mid to late November. It was really cold, had no radio, had no heat and had a six hour drive. I made it all the way back home with the car. So this was my only car at the time. And I spent the first couple years slowly just fixing things that they'd done wrong, putting some stock panels back on the car. Some of the first things I did was I put a stock hood on it. I put a stock bumper. I found a T-bar for it and got the core support put back on, got rid of those hood pins, got a hood latch. I went through a lot of different wheels over the years. Some years I just needed tires and I found a good deal on some wheels that had brand new tires with it so I rolled with those for a while. He had told me it had a new timing belt on it. At one point uh, the timing belt actually broke on me on my way to work about 5 in the morning. Stripped the head off, took everything apart. By some miracle it didn't hurt anything. The head completely checked out. I threw it back together with head studs. It was good to go. It was a strong motor. I ended up having the clutch go out on me. 
replaced it with an ACT upgrade. The car was full of little problems. I'd seen a lot of my friends um, tear cars completely down and rebuild them and I was inspired. So after a few years of driving it, I found a bone stock 91 DX that was an automatic 120,000 miles on it, bought it for like 1200 bucks. That became my daily driver and I started tearing this car down. I started sanding it down. Um, under the gray was a nice bright orange. There may have been a, another color there, but it was an original red car. I ended up driving it uh, around the neighborhood one last time when it was stripped pretty much completely apart. So now that I had another daily driver, I started ripping the car down all the way to the bare chassis. All the glass removed, all the panels, doors, hatch. I started building this car in my buddy's garage who I was living with at the time. Got the car completely stripped, pulled the swap. A lot of those years were spent taking trips uh, to various places to pull parts off of wreck CRXs and other parts cars, making deals on lump sums of parts, and I kind of stashed a lot of those parts away. After I had the car torn down to a certain amount, I ended up buying my first house and had to trailer the car to that. I had a one-car garage, and the majority of this build was done in a one-car garage. I pretty much cut everything out of the engine bay that did need to be there. I wanted it to be clean and old school looking. My buddy John was a huge help, uh, not only giving me advice on a lot of the bodywork stuff, but he was kind of my fabricator buddy. He's the one that brought the welder over and spent some late nights helping me weld up and shave this engine bay. My buddy Cody uh, built a CRX and put a JDM front on his and I fell in love with that look. I also owned a 93 Prelude back in the day and that JDM front end um, really reminds me of the elongated uh, signal lights and headlights of the Preludes of that generation. All the suspension components were stripped off the car. Um, all the control arms and hard parts were all sandblasted and then coated with a coat of black heavy duty farm equipment paint. All the bushings were replaced with polyurethane. The inside of all the wheel wells were wire wheeled clean and coated with an undercoating. Of course, my JDM front had to be imported in from Japan. The shipping was terrible on it. All four corners of my hood were dented under. Also had a couple big dents in the top. I shaved the windshield washer squirters. I also shaved the uh, license plate bump in the middle of the JDM bumper and wanted to keep the smooth fenders and not have the JDM side markers. I just wanted everything super clean. I did a mild fender roll on the front fenders and the quarter panels just so I could fit a little bit wider tire, not have any rubbing. I did all the body work in that garage. A lot of people say they build their car themselves, but they drop it off at the body shop. They do all the, all the body work, all the paint and everything. And uh, that's the majority of the work that goes into building something like this. That's, that's, in my opinion, that's the most important part and the hardest part. When it came to the paint on this car, I wanted something that was unique, but I wanted a factory color that I could match fairly easily. I went with a color called Moonrock Metallic Gray. It's actually a factory S2000 color, but it wasn't offered here in the States. I did all the jamming and the engine bay uh, all myself uh, inside my garage. In fact, the first time I did the engine bay, it didn't turn out uh, as nice as I wanted. I just didn't have enough light and couldn't see what I was doing. Had several buddies come back over, help me scuff the whole thing back down and help me spray it to, to really make it look nice and slick. I had a buddy who is an excellent painter that actually worked at the Honda dealership. And over a long weekend, we trailered the car up and actually used the Honda dealership paint booth to get everything painted right. The car has about four or five coats of clear coat. It's not a show quality paint job, but it's really nice. The car has really, really nice metallic on a sunny day and on an overcast day, it almost looks like a matte gray, but it's a very shifty, very pretty color. After getting it painted, 
I spent weeks wet sanding uh, pretty much the entire car of all the orange peel. At this time, I bought the house I'm currently in. The car was trailered here where I finished buffing the car, reassembly, and everything to get the car back on the road. It's been wire tucked. All the wiring for the headlights and everything are ran through the frame rails. Um, there was a lot of work just to do that. The fuse box was taken out from under the hood and put underneath the dash inside the car. I did a brake tuck. I moved the proportioning valve up under the dash, rerouted all new lines with AN fittings with the Bolt Boys brake tuck kit. All that is converted to AN fittings and ran through the inside of the car. As far as the engine goes, it's got ARP head studs, it's got an Integra Type R intake manifold, it's got a Skunk 2 throttle body. The Type R intake manifold has been port matched with the head with a slight polish on it. The car is running a stock uh, Del Sol VTEC B16 ECU. The car probably has more power in it if you were to have it tuned, but I just wanted everything uh, to run factory smooth, not have any issues. The car weighs somewhere around 2,000 pounds, maybe a little more, maybe less, but it's the perfect example of uh, you don't need a lot of power for a lightweight car to have a lot of fun. The plan was always to go turbo eventually on this, even though I haven't done it. So I went ahead and converted to OBD1. I went with the Skunk 2 um, smaller radiator to make room up there for the snail. I also went with OBD2 injectors for the quick connect plugs. It's got a Walbro 255 fuel pump. I've converted the fuel lines under the hood to AN fittings. I've used steel braided black coated lines with an AN hot rod style inline fuel filter and adapted that to the factory fuel rail. Also in the rear of the car, um, where the fuel line comes out of the car, all that has been converted to AN fittings. Um, stainless line ran all the way up to inside the tank. It's obviously got the JDM front end. It's got the factory SIR lip. It's got Megan Racing uh, 4 to 1 header. That thing goes to an old school classic Monza catback system. It's got Password JDM hood struts, which I had to wait almost a year just to get those. My plans for the interior of this car, I've always loved the stock SI seats, the dark dash, the uh, CRX embossed door panels. I wanted to go a full SI interior. I stole the skin from a passenger side seat, so I have a rip free driver side SI seat. The passenger seat is in great shape. I put in a different carpet from a cleaner car. Everyone knows the climate controls on the CRXs always break, so I installed a CB Honda Accord full climate control. To most people, it looks like it's bone stock. The car does have heat, it blows nice and hot. To keep the theme of the interior um, looking fairly stock, um, I wanted a gauge cluster that at a glance someone could think was stock. I wanted it to match my 8,000 RPM redline with my B16 motor, and I wanted it to be in miles per hour. Uh, that turned out to be kind of something hard to find on a budget. Ended up finding an EK cluster from a VTI model out of Malaysia on eBay. That's the cluster I went with, rewired it, everything works on it like it should. The speedometer has been updated to OBD1 electronic speedometer. I also went through the trouble of swapping out locks with my other CRX that I had that was fully original. One key does the ignition, both doors, the storage compartment behind the seats, as well as the hatch. The battery has been relocated to the rear of the car. The car has a custom three quarter inch plywood wrapped in black vinyl spare tire cover. It's nice and thick, unlike the factory ones, you can carry anything back there. When you lift that up where the spare tire would be, I've got a custom box mounted back there for an Odyssey. I do have the larger Odyssey PC925 battery. The car has been converted to rear disc from a DA, along with all new poly bushings throughout everything. I did new trailing arm bushings, 
I did all ball joints, I did all tie rods, all that was new with mostly Moog parts. The car is sitting on function form type one, full body coilovers. The car does have the Skunk 2 adjustable upper control arms. I have a K-tuned traction bar up front. When I first built the car, uh, I always wanted to run Rota slip streams or something with that style. I originally had the black ones and then I redid them in bronze. I was never super happy with how they turned out. And I had Neo Gen tires, which I really loved. Um, that look was great on the car. After a while, it was just time for a change. A friend of mine had these five Zigen FN01RC wheels for sale. And that's what the car is currently sitting on. They are wrapped in Hankook 205 50 15 size tires. But these wheels uh, really changed up the look of the car and I'm super happy with them. You know, the car is not a daily driver um, and being a two-seater with two kids, I only have limited time to enjoy the car, but Anytime I don't have the kids with me, I take it out and I, I use it as much as I can. I'll put drills and some tools in the back and take with me and, and go to work. The car has been to three import alliances. I've been in a showcase once in St. Louis. The car is a blast. It handles like it's on rails. You know, it's quick enough to have fun. It's like a street legal go-kart is what I tell people. This transmission does not have LSD, but it is a B16 first through fourth gear. And then it's got an LS fifth, sweet transmission. You've got the, the short tight gears for a quick acceleration. And then you've got a fifth gear that's more like a highway gear. And I mean, the car still gets 35 to 40 miles a gallon on the highway. I had the stock pedals break on me once. I'm still running cable clutch, but, but I put in a new pedal assembly and I reinforced it with the Hush Performance Hydro Pedal Assembly Kit. The car has now been on the road for uh, six years since I finished it. It took me four years in total uh, to build the car from the time that I started stripping it down to the first time I drove it somewhere. You know, those first couple years I tweaked a lot of things, um, had a few breakdowns and just fixed a few issues, but I put 15,000 miles on the car. If you've seen one of my old videos, unfortunately I had someone blow their motor in front of me on the highway. Uh, busted one of my headlights. I had to replace those. It's still got a couple little scuffs from that. The car stays in a garage. I take as good a care of it as I can, but I love to drive the car. Um, I love to hit the back roads. I love to hit the curves. You know, I take really good care of the car, but I'm not afraid to rip on it a little bit. The car turned out perfect. It was exactly my vision. It's really cool because uh, every time I get in this car, it's kind of like I get to enjoy um, something that we were never supposed to have here in the States. We never got a B16. We never got these front ends. You know, I built this car uh, myself from the ground up, but I could not have done it without the help of buddies. Um, several buddies of mine inspired me with their builds. My buddy AJ, I have to give a shout out because uh, back in high school, he's the one that introduced me to these cars. We spent many late nights rebuilding his engines, uh, doing B-series swaps back in the day when that was the crazy cool thing to do. He's also helped me out a lot on the car over the years. My buddy Chris, um, he built a beautiful EG, and while he was building that car and finishing it, uh, he's the one that inspired me to be able to just take this thing completely apart and uh, have the faith that I could put it back together. And he was one of the biggest inspirations to me. My buddy John, uh, we call him Chip after Chip Foose. He's a great fabricator. Chris and John both helped me out a lot on uh, giving me tips as far as body work, primer, paint. But uh, John was ultimately the one that uh, helped me weld um, all the holes in the engine bay, helped me shave everything, do most of my metal work. He was a huge help there. My buddy Mike was a huge inspiration with his EF hatch build. My buddy Lance, who has built an incredible uh, Altima over the years that's now K-Series turbo all-wheel drive. He was a big inspiration. My buddy Justin, 
um, who you've maybe seen on some of my other videos with his gorgeous Del Sol. He's always there to uh, reach out and answer questions. My buddy Brian with the J-Swapped EK. Um, Brian's been a huge help. Brian donated a lot of parts to this car over the years. Brian's always been there to answer questions. When I had to repaint my bay, uh, Justin, Ian, Cody, Austin all came over late at night just to help me knock that out real quick. Shout out to you guys. Thanks so much for the help. Uh, Cody was a big inspiration with his CRX. He had the Root Beer Brown CRX with the cream engine bay you may have seen floating around on the internet. Uh, Justin now owns that car. Beautiful car. I owe a big thanks to my buddy Eric, who I was living with when I started building this car, and he let me trash his nice garage. And last but not least, my beautiful wife who stuck by my side while I put way too much time into this car, even though she didn't understand it or like it. That's the story of my homebrewed CRX. When you put in the work with your own two hands, um, every time you take that car out for a drive, every time you wash it, every time you wax it, wipe it down, it's just a different kind of pride when you've done it yourself. Some people told me I'd never get the car put back together. Some people said I'd never finish it. Um, I got it done and I'm not a car builder, so if I can do it, you can do it. It just takes um, heart and dedication. Just don't give up on it. <laughs>to see more videos like this uh, please consider subscribing to my channel doing videos like this is really what my vision is for this channel a ton of work goes into this especially trying to do it all myself the more subscriptions I get on the channel the more time I can dedicate to doing more cool videos like this